Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Dario Health. Manage your blood glucose levels, increase your possibilities. By Jivo Kypopen, the first premixed auto injector for very low blood sugar. And by Dexcom. Take control of your diabetes and live life to the fullest with Dexcom. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. This week, anticipation growing for the new Omnipod system, still waiting for FDA approval. Many of the people behind it have waited a long time, too, knowing the promise of closed-loop systems for people with diabetes and their families. I still remember the very first time, the very first patient that I put the system on and and I was watching that insulin being delivered and I remember just like hugging the participant's mom because we just both knew how incredible this was going to be if, if this could reach masses of people. That's Dr. Trang Lai, Senior Vice President and Medical Director at Insulin Corporation. We'll get an in-depth run-through of the features of Omnipod 5 with Horizon. What makes it different from the other hybrid closed loops already on the market? And many other questions you all sent in. This podcast is not intended as medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. Welcome to another week of the show. You know I'm always so glad to have you here. We aim to educate and inspire about diabetes with a focus on people who use insulin. As you listen to this particular episode, a couple of things to keep in mind. Omnipod 5 with Horizon, the full name of the system we are talking about today, is not out yet. It is not commercially available as of this taping. This episode is live on August 3rd, 2021. The FDA is still mulling it over. If you are looking for even more information and some of the history of this, it may be worth going back to our first episode about this system that was almost exactly two years ago with the company CEO, Shacey Petrovic. And I will link that interview up in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com. COVID really threw this submission for a loop with the delays. And I didn't mean a pun there with the word loop, but I, I know there has been frustration in the community and there's frustration with an insulin as well, but it really is close now. If you are not familiar, and I know we have a lot of new listeners who've joined the show more recently. I know some of you have been hearing about this for years, but bear with me for just a moment as I explain it very quickly. You've got your Omnipod pod. That's the thing that holds and infuses the insulin. It's an all-in-one. It sits on the body. There's no buttons. There's no display. There's nothing to read. You've got your separate handheld controller, the thing with the display on it and the buttons or the touchscreen. Um, how you actually control the pod when it comes to giving insulin for meals or for correction doses, that sort of thing. And for Omnipod 5 with Horizon, you also have the Dexcom G6, the continuous glucose monitor. The pod and the CGM work together to give less or give more insulin to try to keep you in range. Now, that is very, very simple, but Dr. Lai will explain it in much better detail. And I will also link up more information, as always, in the show notes. If you haven't ever seen what this looks like, if you're curious, we'll link you up to all of the information. Dr. Trang Lai, my guest, is the Senior Vice President and Medical Director at Insulet Corporation. She leads their Omnipod 5 Automated Insulin Delivery System clinical program. Before her time at Insulet, Dr. Lai was a pediatric endocrinologist in Australia. And uh, toward the end of the interview, we talk about how personally knowing families that will benefit from the system and systems like it, you know, what that is like for her. So my interview with Dr. Lai in just a moment. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Dario Health. And over the years, I find we manage diabetes better when we're thinking less about all the stuff of diabetes tasks. And that's why I love partnering with people who take the load off on things like ordering supplies so I can really focus on Benny. The Dario Diabetes Success Plan is all about you, all the strips and lancets you need delivered to your door, one-on-one -on -one coaching so you can meet your milestones, weekly insights into your trends with suggestions on how to succeed. Get the diabetes management plan that works with you and for you. Dario's published studies demonstrate high-impact clinical results. Find out more. Go to mydario.com forward slash diabetes dash connections. Dr. Lai, thank you so much for spending some time with me. My listeners are very excited to get all the information that they can about this. So thanks for being with me today. 
Yeah, great to be on the program. Thanks, Stacey. You got it. Let's start with an overview. Uh, I know that most people listening are probably very familiar with what we think OmniPod 5 with Horizon will be. But can you start by just giving us an update and taking us through what is in front of the FDA for approval as as you and I are speaking today? Yeah, so um, happy to do so. The OmniPod 5 system that you're referring to is OmniPod or Insulet's first automated insulin delivery system. Uh, so this system it has uh, previously known as Horizon or the OmniPod 5 algorithm on the pod itself. And it talks directly with the ICGM, which is the Dexcom G6 sensor, and um, also has a separate controller device as well to be able to remotely deliver boluses and stop and start um, automated mode. The system that's in front of uh, FTA um, just requires you to wear a pod and a CGM to stay in automated insulin delivery because the algorithm is on the pod itself. And I, I think that is the, the key feature of the Omnipod 5 system. A lot to break down there and we'll get to each of the components, but let's start there with the kind of the brains of the operation being on the pod. What does that mean in a practical sense when someone is wearing the system, that they, they don't have to worry about it stopping, that sort of thing? Yeah, so um, the the key difference between pr- previous uh, products is that with our current Omnipod Dash and uh, earlier versions of Omnipod, the pod d- delivers the basal programs and the bolus delivery that the user has initiated. And so insulin um, is not under automated delivery. But in our future system with Omnipod 5, what the pod does is it takes the CGM value, which you wear on body, and so that value directly communicates with the pod itself. And then the system, um, the algorithm on the pod takes that CGM value and determines how much insulin you need uh, every five minutes. So if you're running high and you need a little bit more insulin, the pod will automatically increase insulin delivery. And if you're at your target or dropping low, um, it will augment insulin delivery. So it might suspend or it might reduce the insulin that you need. That is the key difference between the um, pod that you, that is available today and the future with Omnipod 5. You would still use the uh, PDM or the phone, and we'll get to that, to give yourself um, a meal bolus or a correction bolus. That's right. For those those instances where you're about to have a meal or um, if you're uh, running high for whatever reason, like you underestimated um, carbs earlier and you want to give a manual bolus, you can do that any time. And you would do that by um, using the controller device or PDM to uh, enter in your carbs and uh, use our bolus calculator to deliver that insulin. So all of those uh, features are very similar to the current product in Omnipod Dash, which again is very similar to our earlier versions of Omnipod. Let's talk about the algorithm a little bit. Um, I know there's a lot that's proprietary here, but I'm, I'm curious. We've seen over the last couple of years Medtronic come out with a, you know an automated device. Tandem has Control IQ. I believe my listeners are pretty familiar with the workings of those. What would be the biggest differences? between how those systems work and how Omnipod 5 with Horizon will work? I'm very familiar with those algorithms because I, um, you know, in my previous life, I worked very closely with those systems as they were being developed. And so I'd say, you know, having been in this role for the last five years and been running the clinical trials uh, for them, I can tell you that the main difference I'd say would be that our algorithm you can set the target glucose for whatever um, time of day. And the range we have is between 110 to 150 in 10 milligram per deciliter increments. And you might have a family where you want to go overnight, you want to run at 120 um, because you're feeling more comfortable at 120 overnight. And then but during the day, you want to run at 110. You can set up a profile so that the algorithm augments insulin delivery to your preferred target glucose level. And, you know, we we knew when we were coming to market that we were not going, we certainly weren't the first and not the second 
product to market. So we knew that we had to deliver a level of personalization for our users. And so we really you know, listened to what people wanted and people do want that level of personalization and customization. And so we implemented that design feature into our clinical trial to demonstrate that our system performs very safely across those different target glucose levels. And so our clinical studies, which I'm sure we'll get into, uh, did what was tested across a very wide range of patients. So initially, we did a big study, which was for patients aged 6 to 70 years of age. And then most recently, just a couple of weeks ago, we were reported on our preschool age participants who were between two to six years of age. And, and Stacey, I'm sure you'll appreciate that very young age group, <laughs> the um, Glucose control is just very variable, very unpredictable. And, so, you know, I think strength of our algorithm is that it works very well, even if you, you know, uh, miss or skip a bolus occasionally. You know, that algorithm is going to kick in and it's going to deliver, you know, a decent amount of insulin to get you back in range. You know, it's, it's not going to happen immediately, but it's going to do its best to keep you in range as much as possible. And, and similar, I'd say, to the other systems, especially, I'd say, more second generation systems, is that we are getting you know, excellent time and range, uh, especially in the overnight period. It was, I, I laughed a little when you said preschool, as you know, my son was diagnosed before he was two. And whenever I see studies with little kids that work so well, it's so exciting because, you know, that age group, they can't even tell you when they're feeling weird. They can't, because my son couldn't even pronounce the word diabetes. So, you know, it's a, it's a different age group altogether. So I was thrilled to see those results. I know. Well, I have two kids under five right now and they don't have diabetes. And I have no idea how much they're going to eat or whether or not, you know, how much activity they're going to do. And I just can't even fathom how challenging it would be to have a child with diabetes. And are they low or are they, or are they just, grumpy. Right, right, right. Exactly. Are they sleepy? Because they... I didn't have a nap. Right. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I should have said this towards the beginning. And I know, I know, I know, Dr. Lai, that you know this. We use Control IQ. We're very happy with the tandem, but we're not rooting for any system here. I think that the, and I say we, I mean me. I, I, it's so exciting to see all of these systems beginning to come to market, beginning to really have an impact, to have differences in their algorithms so that people can pick and choose exactly what they want. And we're just at the beginning of it. So I am so excited to see the studies going so well. I have a couple of questions about what you've already mentioned. Um, that target of 110 to 150, just to be crystal clear about it, you're talking about not just putting the pump into, say, using tandem, for example, exercise mode or sleep mode. You're saying in you know my weekday profile, for example, I know my son plays basketball every day from three to seven. So we're going to create a profile that changes his blood glucose target for that period of time perhaps starting, you know, before he plays a little bit and then extending after. And that's an actual profile in the, in the pump that you then could change. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. That's really interesting. Is there an, is there a, and I hate to use tandem's words, sorry, is there an exercise mode or a sleep mode or is it just the user sets it as they want? Right back to Dr. Lai answering that question, but first... Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Jibo Kaipo Pen. And you know low blood sugar feels horrible. You can get shaky and sweaty or even feel like you're going to pass out. There are a lot of symptoms and they can be different for everyone. I'm so glad we have a different option to treat very low blood sugar. Jibo Kaipo Pen. It's the first auto injector to treat very low blood sugar. Jivo Kaipo Pen is pre-mixed and ready to go with no visible needle. Before Jivo, people needed to go through a lot of steps to get glucagon treatments ready to be used. And this made emergency situations even more challenging and stressful. This is so much better. I'm grateful we have it on hand. Find out more, go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Jivo logo. Jivo shouldn't be used in patients with pheochromocytoma or insulinoma. Visit jivoglucagon.com slash risk. Now back to Dr. Lai, going into more detail about how the Omnipod 5 with Horizon system works. Uh, so it's separate, but yes, what you describe is exactly how our product works. So during the day, uh, it might be that you'd, you want your son to run at 110 through the day, but maybe between the hours of 3 and 7, you'd run at 140. That is an option. 
uh, and you can set that up through pro programs so that he doesn't have to remember to do that every day. Or you can run in uh, what we call a hyper protect mode, which is works similarly to like a temp basil that you you'll be familiar with. So that's more of an ad hoc. Uh, oh, I feel like exercising for the next two hours. I'm going to set my program in hyper protect mode. So in hyper protect, what the system does is it adjusts your target glucose to 150, and it actually gives you less insulin than your basal insulin. So you're running essentially with less insulin on board than you would normally would during that period. And so we, we did a lot of studies to kind of land on that design, and we feel that it does a good job of preventing hypoglycemia for, uh, for people without problems after, afterwards. So it, it has worked well because it doesn't, you know, sometimes when you're preparing for exercise, you might take a snack. Um, and that drives your blood glucose up. And then if you have a really robust algorithm, it might kick in and, and give you a fair amount of insulin. So that's what we were trying to avoid with our design was that um, not just that the set point is elevated, but also that the system can't give too much insulin during that time. So that's sort of our equivalent exercise mode. Uh, we don't have anything called sleep mode, but um, as I said, our set point of 110 you know, once we're cleared, will be the lowest available in the United States. One of the things I've learned recently, and I, I feel like I haven't seen this reported very widely, is that unlike Tandem's Control IQ, the Omnipod system, the Omnipod 5 with Horizon, learns the user. It changes. It has a little bit of, I guess I'd call it artificial intelligence. Is that correct? And can you walk me through what I'm saying, what I mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think I think you're um, getting to a, a really key difference between our our system and others. So with with our system, when we when we were developing it, we wanted to reduce the work that comes with diabetes as well. And so you know, a lot of the work that comes with it is you know, adjusting basal rate, adjusting you know all the settings and and things like that. And and so our system. Initially, when you when you have it out of the box, it does rely on your basal rates to start off automated insulin delivery. But over time, the system learns through the um, total daily insulin that is delivered by the system. So the, the system knows about this and it can rely on this information because it's reliable, comes through the system to augment insulin delivery. So you might have a small child who only has 10 units of insulin per day. And our system is not going to give too much insulin based upon the fact that it knows that in the last few days, it's never given more than 10 units a day. And so it, the, the safety constraints are uh, personalized for that user. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, you know, we have users who use 100 units a day. And in that case, the algorithm knows that it can give a lot more insulin and this person will tolerate it quite fine because, you know, one unit of insulin is unlikely to make much difference for this person who takes 100 units a day. And so as it accrues that information over time, the algorithm does adapt the ability, you know, how much insulin it delivers based on that information. So what it means is that in order to get the results we got, you know, you're not having to tweak um, basal rates on an hourly basis. Sometimes I've seen, you know, people have different basal rates every hour. And, and what we're really striving to do here at, at Insulet is create products that reduce burden for people. And that includes including, you know, optimizing settings so that people can get, you know, so that everybody can get good glucose control and, and um, not have to rely on perhaps educators and clinicians at big academic centers who are familiar with these devices to really get those good glycemic uh, results. So I'm just trying to understand the, um, the automatic adjustment that you're talking about there based on the total daily insulin. So if after a, a few weeks of using Omnipod 5 with Horizon, a person should expect 
to not adjust basal rates should like what should they be seeing because if like let's say if someone has six different basal rates when they start on the system what what's yeah. happening right what's going on are they are, is it like the other systems where it's adjusting every five minutes it's giving you boluses if needed you know, how is the smartness of the of the pump working there yes if you had six different rates running per 24 hours initially the algorithm would take that information and would augment insulin delivery every five minutes based upon the inputs that were provided to the system, uh, as well as how your CGM is tracking, how much insulin on board you have, all of those things. So at all times, the system makes a uh, insulin decision every five minutes. So that occurs as soon as you put the system into automated mode. That happens all the time. And, and when people ask me about auto corrections, I say yes. The system automates um, and makes that adjustment every five minutes to drive you towards your target glucose. So corrections are incorporated within the system. We don't consider any difference between basal modulation and bolus modulation. Uh, for us, insulin is insulin. So every five minutes, you're getting a essentially auto correction if you need it, but that works very similarly to all you know the systems that are currently on the market. And over time, the those six basal programs that you have really are, are not utilized in the system at all beyond that first pod. And so, if you are running high for whatever reason, um, and you know you you tweak other things, but not your basal rate. And so I'd say in, in that way, you know, our system is more similar to the um, Medtronic system on, in that way, in that the basal rates do not directly inform automated insulin delivery. But things that are still under your control at all times is um, your insulin to carb ratio, your correction factor, target glucose, you know, correct above all the, those settings that have always been, you know, within Omnipod and also very similar across many bolus calculators, all stay the same. So you're always in, going to be sort of always going to be directly in control of all of that. And so if you're running high, it may, might be that you need more corrections over time before your system adjusts to that higher insulin requirement. But you're in control of always. the target number, but only only down to 110. That's right. Gosh, I have so many questions. With the automated systems, I think you mentioned this, but I'm not sure. What about insulin duration? Is that something that the user can change or is that something that is set? So there, so the, in our system, the user can change that. And how it manifests itself is that it will inform the duration of insulin action for all those manual boluses that you deliver. So if you're someone who's very sensitive to insulin and it hangs around for a really long time in your body and you have a six hourly insulin action, then you can program that and for, you know, your bolus of insulin that you deliver at 6 a.m. in the morning, that's going to take till midday before it disappears from the system as it knows it. All of those will still be accounted in the same way with the duration of insulin action that you provide to the system. In terms of the automated insulin delivery, we have the insulin's proprietary duration of insulin delivery that is the input to the insulin model from which we deliver insulin. So that is consistent and is just one value and it's the same value in the algorithm that's being tested across the board from in all of our clinical trial. So that does not change and is within the algorithm that dictates that five minutely insulin delivery. To me, that was one of the big surprises of using an automated system. Um, we have, you know, my son is 16 and we started using an automated system when he was, what, 14. So, you know, in the middle of those fabulous teenage years when he's using tons and tons of insulin. And it, it seemed to me that we needed an insulin duration of like two to three hours. And when they switched it on tandem, it's it's five. I, I really fought on that thinking this is going to be a disaster. And it was fine. <laughs> it worked really well. <laughs> So it's one of those interesting things. Once you get in an automated system and realize, and this is my opinion, once you realize how much work you were doing to try to stay in range, it's kind of nice to let that system take over once you trust it. 
And I would assume that that's what you found in these studies. I mean, you mentioned that people spent more time in range, but let me give you the floor. Take a minute or two to talk about, I've seen the studies that, you know, you've been kind of putting them out with different age groups over the last couple of weeks and months. Take a moment to brag about the studies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, um, you know, it's so grateful to the diabetes community who really gave this product life through our clinical studies. So um, I'm just deep, deeply grateful for every patient and family who took part in it because um, without them, you know, it would be a product, but it wouldn't be Omnipod 5. And so it was really a, a ton of work that we, I, I feel like, has been many years in the making. Yeah, we've worked really hard on this algorithm to get it um, pretty much as good as it could be. And, you know, back in 2019, as we were preparing to do these clinical studies, I really wasn't sure about how our results would stack up. But I have to say that I'm completely blown away by how well our algorithm has performed. So in the um, talk first about our um, six to to 70-year-old age group, so the first lot of um, results that came out came out in March of this year. We had uh, essentially two groups. So we had the children, which were six to uh, 14 years of age, and then the 14 to 70 years of age, um, which is the adolescent and adult group. So I'll just cover the um, adult group first. So we saw um, time and range improvement to uh, 74% in the adult group, uh, A1C reduction down to 6.8%. And then very minimal hypoglycemia. So if you look at our hypo compared to other published data out there, it's the lowest um, hypo, uh, which we measure by time under 70 compared to all the other groups. And in terms of the children, the 6 to 13.9 years of age group, we got to a timing range um, of 68%. And this was um, equivalent to 3.7 hours per day uh, improvement. So really remarkable improvement in timing range. And in terms of A1C improvement, we um, got that down from 7.7% down to 6.99%. So really remarkable reduction in A1C. And what's Super, super exciting is that just recently at ADA this year, which is a couple of weeks ago, we showed that um, in the extension phase, so after the main three-month pivotal study, everyone could continue using it if they chose to. And we saw a further reduction in A1C, which is um, just incredible. So um, in in both the adults and children, we saw a uh, continued decline in A1C. So just really super exciting to see that, you know, our product continues to be helpful for these patients with diabetes. Let's talk a little bit about the the setup of the system. You know, in the very beginning of the interview, I asked you to kind of describe it, and it's Omnipod, Dexcom G6, and then a controller of some kind. Let's talk about the controller. Last I had heard, this was going to be the PDM, if needed, the, the more traditional, I guess you'd call it, but you'll explain it to me, or an Android phone. Tell me about the controller in the short term, and then we can talk about what you're planning. Yeah, that's right. So we will have the the controller device. So we have an insulet provided controller, which uh, we're choosing to use that word as a PDM because not everyone knows what a PDM is. But yes, that controller device, we will always ship with our product. And so you will be able to use that. It's a uh, locked down device, which can only communicate with pods and can't really do much else with it and but users will have the option to download an app from their from selected android phone to also have that same experience so it's the exact same app that would be that would exist on the controller and you would be able to essentially control your pods and replace that controller with the android app I should have said the PDM stands for what? Personal Diabetes Manager? That's right. <laughs> okay, so that's an antiquated term now, though. So we'll put that aside. But to be clear, so if I have the right Android phone, you're saying this is not a lockdown Android phone. I can get this, the app, and I can use my personal phone to control my Omnipod 5 with Horizon system. Yes, that's right. That's what's 
currently in front of FDA right now. Do you know, and again, if it's up to them or you can't say, I know we're limited sometimes, what models or is there a list somewhere? Yeah, we haven't. I, I don't think we have indicated all the phone models that it will be available at point in time, but we'll do that soon after launch. We'll, we'll list those out, but they, they will be as a first offering selected uh, Android phone. And I would assume the plan is to eventually go to all types of phones, including Apple. That's right. My question for Omnipod is always what I'm about to ask you, but phone control makes it a little bit obsolete. And that is, why no button on the pod? Why not even like a one dose, one unit or something on the pod? <laughs> I've been asking this for, since I've had the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I think it just originated with the original design. And um, I think perhaps because it really started originally with the idea of children using our device and having that separate controller to track uh, all the information. I think just at that time, um, because it was primarily a product for um, children, we wanted to make sure that insulin delivery was always, you know, very intentional and not unintentional. And so would always to have that remote control potential and, and not have any, pod, you know, button on the pod. Uh, which could lead to accidental insulin delivery if unintended. Uh, just a couple of laundry list type questions. Dexcom has already announced that they're going to seek FDA approval for the G7 soon. I would assume that Omnipod will eventually you know, work with the G7. Should users be concerned at all about that kind of compatibility? Yeah, I think eventually you can expect that, you know, systems that are integrated with G6 today will be working towards G7 in future. You know, I think the whole idea of interoperability, which was beheaded by the FDA, really enables companies to work faster to integrate with future versions of systems. So, you know, we we want to be yeah, at the leading edge of that innovation and so I think that will come with time. I don't think we've announced any times or dates regarding that, but it is something that, you know, we fully intend to support. And this may be another business type question, but everyone who's using Omnipod right now, what's the plan for current customers? We're getting ahead of ourselves. I know the system's not approved, but can people using Eros and Dash expect to kind of be seamlessly switched over to Omnipod 5 with Horizon? Yeah, I don't think we have released all the information regarding uh, how we're going to transition our current customers yet. I I don't think that that is publicly uh, available yet. But we, you know, one thing we do strongly believe in is supporting our current customers. Um, What we have said is that Omnipod 5 will be available via the pharmacy channel at price parity to Dash. And so uh, what that means that if you are already receiving Dash today, that you're going to be in you know, a very good position to have coverage for uh, Omnipod 5. Um, but we haven't detailed um, the information regarding you know, how we're specifically transitioning every single patient at this, at this point. Separately for Omnipod, Tide Pool Loop is also in front of the FDA as you and I are speaking. I'm not even quite sure really what to ask you about this, uh, Dr. Lai, because I know it's coming from Tidepool, but can you share anything about the relationship from Omnipod to Tandem and how the Loop project is going? It's kind of a, it's a different animal kind of out there, but I don't want to leave without asking you about it. Yeah, you just said Omnipod to Tandem, but... Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm yes, Omnipod, Omnipod to, to Tidepool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that is Tidepool's program, so it's best that you speak to Howard about that. But it is a program that we support, um, and we certainly, you know, believe in interoperability and supporting choice for our users. And yes, you're right. I believe the last update is that it, it is currently under review with FTA. Would it use the Dash pods, or does it use? The- it's with uh, Omnipod Five Pod, so it's it's not it's not going to be backwards compatible with Dash Pod. Got it. So that was my my next question was so if Tide Pool Loop is approved, if Omnipod Five with Horizon is approved, Omnipod is manufacturing the same pods for both systems. That's right. I know you know 
I'm not sure we're supposed to talk about it, but I know you know, because you've spoken to the loopers groups and you speak to people all the time, that there's a bunch of people using the older pods, the Eros pods, I believe, for a non-FDA approved system. They're looping with, this is separate from tide pool loop, they're looping with those pods. Is Omnipod going to keep making those pods once this new system is approved? We haven't said exactly when we will stop making those pods, but I I think the community should expect, which, and I know that they already do, that at some point in time in the near future, we would need to stop making those pods. And that's for a, a variety of reasons. But as you will know, Stacey, and many of your audience will know, you know, that is much older technology. And, you know, we prioritize innovation that is going to work well and be safe for our users. You know, that's partly why we moved to Dash um, to integrate Bluetooth technology and then uh, which has enabled us with Omnipod 5 to talk uh, via Bluetooth to CGM. So that type of safe integration is, is really important to us in our future offerings of product. And so at some point in time, that will, we will need to stop making that. And, and also, you know, that is with older technology, older components, um, et cetera. So once that happens, though, we will let the community know with sufficient time so that people can prepare for alternative um, methods of therapy. And hopefully that will be Omnipod 5. You've been so generous with your time. I just have a couple of more questions. I, I really appreciate it. One of the questions that was asked in the podcast Facebook group was, when approved, how will the training for this go? In other words, with Control IQ, I sat down, I took a course, I took a quiz, and once I passed it, my doctor had written a prescription, and we got the downloadable you know, into the pump, and we were off and running. It did not meet with a diabetes educator or an endocrinologist to learn how to use Control IQ. What will the system be for teaching people and getting Omnipod 5 to them? Yeah, so for people who are already using Omnipod Dash, you can expect that the experience will be similar to what you just described for Control IQ. So you will not have to meet someone in person in order for you to start that system up. So it will be similar, you know, training, quiz, a number of steps, but you can do it all self-directed and be off and running on Omnipod 5. Or you can choose to speak to someone or meet in person with an educator if you wanted more information about, for instance, how the algorithm works or whatever question you had on your mind. But for brand new users who've never used a pump before, then it will there'll always be in person training um, or virtual training. You know, there are some things that you, we still feel that is um, necessary to cover. Uh, you know, basics of pump therapy. Um, that will require meeting with the certified pump trainer to go through. But, but yes, for current Omnipod um, Dash users, you can expect the transition to be fairly seamless. And another question that came up was about um, insurance coverage, but particularly Medicare. Can you speak to that? Yeah, so um, currently we have uh, Medicare coverage uh, under Part D, uh, which allows for pharmacy coverage of the pod. So we we um, do have that, and that only came in recently in the last, I'd say, three years or so. So once that came through uh, CMS, we worked with uh, many plans to get uh, Omnipod covered under that Part D for Medicare. So one of the things that you know we're working on while um, FDA um, clearance is, is still under review we are working on making sure that we get as many people covered as possible when uh, launch day comes. So yeah, it's a major priority for us to make sure that our patients get covered for this product. You referred back a couple times to your days as a pediatric endocrinologist. How exciting is this for you? You know the people <laughs> that use this product. You know the people that use other you know, uh, automated pumps. Can you speak a little bit just from your personal side about the excitement? Because you know this is going to help people. Yeah, it's just incredibly exciting. And maybe not everyone knows about this, but uh, yes, Stacey, as you mentioned, I am a pediatric endocrinologist. And and it's actually about 10 years ago now that I did my very first study in automated insulin delivery. And that was back in 
Perth in uh, Western Australia. And in that study, we used a Medtronic pump, uh, two Medtronic sensors and a BlackBerry phone. And the algorithm was on a BlackBerry phone. And it was, and I haven't mentioned this to many people, but it, those those sensors were, um, you know, um, were challenging at times to, to deliver insulin from, but it, it was such important studies uh, in terms of proof of concept to show that, you know, we could augment insulin delivery and, and making that decision every five minutes gets you in better glucose control. And it was really extraordinary. And I still remember the very first time, the very first patient that I put the system on and, you know, and I was watching that insulin being delivered. And uh, I remember just like hugging the participant's mom because, you know, we just both knew how incredible this was going to be if, if this could reach masses of people. It's always been, for me, something that will be realized. And it, you know, it has been through really great products like Control IQ and, you know, soon Omnipod 5 will be out with a, a great algorithm. And because we just know that this type of technology is what is going to allow parents to sleep at night and let people be comfortable with their diabetes and be more confident about it so that they can focus their brains on other life decisions and not be so consumed by their diabetes. And so it is really incredible for me to be able to see the results of our algorithm just work so well in such a huge population of patients, even in cl just in clinical trials today. And I just know that there's going to be incredible impact from this product in future when we launch. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing so much information. We're all excited to, to see what happens next. And I hope that you or, you know, other folks from Insulet will come on and share more information, you know, fingers crossed as the, the rollout happens. So thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much. So happy to be on. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. Lots more information at diabetes-connections.com. I know the one question everybody asked that we cannot answer is when will this be available? Uh, it will be available when the FDA approves it. And, you know, that could come any minute. It could come in a few months. Uh, you know, we, we are not privy to that information. But once it is available, it will take a little while to roll out. So Omnipod, I'm sure, will make a lot more information available as we move forward. We'll talk to them again. And we will answer as many questions as possible. Also got a lot of questions about insurers. That's going to depend as well. Quite often, insurers will not initially cover new products. Um, I know Omnipod is talking with everybody, but it, it may take a little bit of time. So we'll circle back on all of that. It is difficult to pick and choose the listener questions that I ask, but I really try to focus on what I know the person that I'm talking to can answer. And I thought Dr. Lai was, was really fabulous and spoke to me, frankly, for longer than I expected. So I really appreciate her sharing so much information with us. And I hope you found that helpful. All right. Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Dexcom. And I do want to talk for a moment about Control IQ. You heard me mention that several times during the interview. That is the Dexcom G6 Tandem Pump Software Integration. When it comes to Benny's numbers, you know I hardly expect perfection. I want him happy. I want him healthy. I have to say Control IQ has exceeded my expectations. Benny is able to do less checking and bolusing and is spending more time in range. His last couple of A1Cs were his lowest ever. And this isn't a teenager, the time when I was really prepared for him to be struggling. His sleep is better too, with basal adjustments possible every five minutes. The system is working hard to keep him in range. And that means we hear far fewer Dexcom alerts, which means everybody's sleeping better. I'm really so grateful for this. Of course, individual results may vary. To learn more, go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. All right, before I let you go, we're actually traveling this week. So uh, the interview with Benny about Israel is coming up. And thank you so much for all of the questions that you have sent in. There is a Facebook group post at Diabetes Connections of the group. If you want to chime in and ask me some questions to ask my son, who recently got home from one month overseas. He is 16 and he was with a camp group, but it was not a diabetes camp. He's home safe and I've done some debriefing with him. It was really interesting. And um, gosh, teenage boys, so interesting. I can't wait to share some of 
his stuff with you. And some things I'm not sure I will share. No, I mean, we're pretty much an open book, but eek. Right? He, he doesn't really handle diabetes exactly the same as I would, but home safe and sound and really did very, very well. Reminder that on Wednesdays, I do In the News live on Facebook on Diabetes Connections, the Facebook page, and that becomes a podcast episode on Fridays. I, as I said, I'm traveling, so hopefully, technically, all will go well. We shall see. But that In the News episode has become a lot of fun, frankly, and people really enjoy that. It's real short, so I'll put that out as well. And then in the weeks to come, I have some great interviews for you. We have um, interviews about sports and being very active. I have an interview with the folks at Afreza that I'm really excited to bring to you. It's been a while since we spoke to them. And of course, that interview with Benny. So lots to come. Thank you, as always, to my editor, John Buchanan from Audio Editing Solutions. And thank you so much for listening. I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here in just a couple of days. Until then, be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.